Welcome to the biker side of life. It's sunny in the UK right now, which has been rare lately. Um, I'm going to do a quick video on a long promised comparison. Um, apologies to those of you who wanted this eight months ago. Uh, unfortunately, uh, one of the bikes in question had reliability problems and just hasn't run long enough to do have a test on it really. So the two bikes in question, two iconic dirt bikes, the Honda XR 250R. That's a 2003 model I have and the Yamaha TTR 250 that's on a 93 model so that's the open enduro model. Um, both very similar bikes on paper um, and a, a classic comparison of you know which shall I get um, you know there's not many 250 air cooled good off-road bikes around um, at the, around the 120 kilo mark you know these are famed to be bulletproof but are they so I've had the XR 250R for a couple of years absolutely love this bike it is an awesome bike you know the, literally when they say they don't make these like any this anymore they don't um, air cooled of course 250 um, great off-road bike but it's kickstart only there's no electric start and there's no um, capability of charging your phone unless you add add some electrics to it because there's no battery TTR on the other hand um, my model is electric start only, no kickstart, um, which for some people is good and bad, but it does have the battery and capability of charging your phone. I've added a USB uh, charger to that. So slightly different in the way they are. Now they do do a TTR with a kickstart and electric start, which is a good combination of course, uh, but may add a little bit of weight. Um, size wise, these bikes are very similar. The XR is slightly taller, slightly better ground clearance. They're both running 18 inch rear wheels and 21 inch front. So they're both designed obviously for to be very capable off road. They both have 280 mil of travel front and back. However, the XR250R feels taller and is slightly taller. Um, it has a seat height of 930 mil and a ground clearance of 305 um, which I found on this bike to be exactly right. The TTR is slightly shorter, not a lot, so it's, it's reported seat height of 914 and a ground clearance of 305 however this bike seems to be more like 900 seat height and 280 ground clearance. Um, I imagine it's just the age of it and a bit of sag on the suspension um, but still quite amazing um, ground clearance there. Um, so obviously it is the slightly lower of the bikes. Now when we look at how these bikes fare in comparison, the XR250R is a very narrow, very slender bike with this beautiful long plank seat which is designed for off-road riding. The TTR is more designed it still has this, this lovely long seat, but it is slightly wider and it feels slightly fatter. Obviously it's designed to take a pillion if necessary. It has some small pillion pegs. Um, the XR makes no qualms about not carrying passengers. It's not designed for it. The seat's not designed for it and there's no pegs. It is an off-road bike. Um, so if you want to carry a pillion every now and then, I don't imagine it's a great bike for it, but the TTR would be the kiddie. The XR feels more nimble. It feels taller, narrower, lighter. So I have measured them, I've weighed them. Um, I have done the weighing on bathroom scales. And yes, it's possible. You weigh one wheel at a time, um, take the best out of three comparison, make sure they're not wildly apart. So, the XR250R, they've both got about half a tank of fuel. The XR250R has come in at 116 kilos. Now that's a light bike. Um, obviously it doesn't have the starting motor uh, or the battery. Um, so 116 kilos, that's a light bike. 
Um, for a bike that has, I, I don't know it, whether it's 3,000 or 6,000 mile service intervals. Um, the TTR, similar sort of service intervals. I mean, look, you wouldn't, if you're riding these off-road, you wouldn't leave them for 3,000 miles before you change the oil. But they're long service intervals. It's not like KTM where you've got to change the oil every five minutes. Now, the TTR, the weight is higher, which you would expect. It's electric start and it has a battery. It's 124 kilos. So there's eight to 10 kilos between the two bikes, which is expect, you know, you could expect that. Thing is, it does feel it. You can really feel the extra weight on the TTR. If you lean it over, um, you know, to, to a 45 degree angle, you can feel that weight. The XR definitely feels lighter. Now, when you're riding the bikes, the TTR feels planted on the trails and it's, it's nice to ride. I would say the XR is more fun to ride. It's more nimble, it's quicker on the throttle, and it's, it's a more fun bike. However, when you get on the road, they both run six-speed transmissions. Um, the sixth gear on the TTR is a higher gear, which allows you to ride in comfort up to you know, 70 miles an hour. The XR really 60 mile an hour. I know you can change the drive, you know, sprocket and the rear sprocket and mess about with it. And you could do that, but you might lose some capability off-road. So as in a standard form, the XR is better off-road. The TTR is better on the road. Both of them do the job. Um, if you were going to ride prim primarily on lots of roads to get to your off-roading, I would go TTR because you can charge your phone. Um, and um, you, it's more comfortable on the roads. If you're going to take the bike and you're happy with a kickstart only, and you're going to take the bike in a van to your trails, you're going to ride the bike and take it home again and do day rides, then I'd go with the XR. So we've had the stats. Um, I'm going to keep one of these bikes. Now, I never thought I'd sell the XR. However, I have got an injured right foot. And it, if it plays me up, I can't kickstart the bike. If you're on the side of a hill, the, look, the XR starts first kick every time. Second kick, if not. If you're on the side of a hill on a hot day and you've been, you know, riding the bike hard and it won't start, you, it's quite a tall bike. I'm not that tall. I may have to roll it down the hill to the bottom of the hill to start it or, or do something else to start it because, uh, or bump start it because I'm just not going to get on that kickstart on the side of a dodgy hill. I'm, I'm probably going to struggle. TTR, of course, um, I can just push the button and go. So which bike am I going to, which bike am I going to keep? Everyone's different. Everyone's going to have a different use. I've decided I like the TTR so much that I'm going to keep it. And I like it so much, I'm going to build it probably to some people's dismay, into a lightweight adventure bike. Now, reliability-wise and quality of build-wise, you just look around the bikes, the Honda has it. It's a Honda of this period, 1990s uh, to 2000s. You know, when they talk about bulletproof and quality, they're talking about these type of Hondas. The Yamaha, listen, it's a good bike, but it has some quality issues and it's not just because this bike's had problems when you look around the bike the, the fit and finish and the quality of some of the components just doesn't seem as good as the xr when you look on the forums um ttr forums are full of bikes with problems and intermittent faults and things the xr forums not so much you're riding the bike not fixing it you know that's to be considered but for me, I want a lightweight adventure bike around the 120, 130 kilo with a bit of power. Um, the, the XR has 30 horsepower, the TTR has 28. So that's why the XR is probably a little bit more lively and it feels it. The torque, however, the XR only has 24.5 Newton meters of torque, whereas the TTR has 27 newton meters of torque and feels it so the xr is more lively hopping over puddles lifting the front wheel and all that sort of thing the ttr will chug over things without stalling a little bit better so for beginners ttr 
possibly the better bike. For a bit more fun, the XR, possibly the better bike. But for me, I'm gonna build a lightweight adventure bike and this is the base bike I'm going to do it on. So I've just bought a service 22 litre tank. I have actually, um, at the weekend, just put some bar risers on. I have, from Totally TTRs, just ordered a 350 kit to go on this bike, which will give it the power I need. I have bought another engine, replacement engine, with a kickstart, so it'll be electric and kickstart, which I can build while I'm riding this bike. So I'm gonna build a 350 open enduro engine with a kickstart and electric start, and then I'm gonna transplant it into this bike. Um, it's gonna have the bigger fuel tank and some other mods going on. Um, it's got MT21 tires on at the moment, which I hate, so it's gonna get Michelin trackers on it. Probably put some kind of small fairing. I have got the adventure spec one to go on the front. Um, but I'll look at that and see what's best choice at the time. Um, and this, I'm hoping, will be a bike I can get on with some luggage, go and do five days of tet, um, not get trapped underneath it because it's not too heavy, chug over difficult stuff if I'm struggling on my own, not needing help, you know, enjoy riding it on the road um, at highway speeds, and just be an all-round 125, 30 kilo air cooled 350 dream machine, really. So there you have it. That's my opinion. The choice is yours. I've given you some information. I'm sorry I couldn't do the in-depth review of riding both of these bikes and videoing them, but it's been eight months since I first announced I was gonna do it. The reliabilities of <laughs> issues of the TTR have caused um, ca caused me not to be able to do it. But for some reason I've fallen in love with it enough that I'm now keeping it and building it into an adventure bike. So watch, watch our channel um, and see how this build goes and what I eventually think of the bike. Have I made the right choice? Anyway, that's it from me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Sorry it's taken so long and sorry it's not. There's no footage of riding these bikes. I have got footage of riding both these bikes, which I can put up at some point. Um, but there we go, two iconic bikes. You've got a little bit more information now. If you need any more information, drop a, uh, a question in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. Take care.